this area is so industrial and it's so 1920s. Anytime people come down here, it's very blue collar. They're always looking for good restaurants and there's basically hot dogs and rots. We're in the Bridgeport neighborhood of Chicago, which is South Side. My artwork has often been described as contemporary folk art. I kind of like to think of it as, as it's all mixed media work, but it's um, it's sort of an exploration of different mediums. So with my woodwork, uh, I use a lot of found objects, but I don't use them for what they are. Like I'll find a golf club and I'll cut it into 30 pieces and kind of rearrange those pieces, kind of weld them together or tie them together, and then nail them to a board or something like that, and then use those as a texture. So I'm not just taking something at its face value, I'm kind of reinterpreting each material. Um, you know, a piece of wood that I find um, floating down the Mississippi River might end up being, you know, an outline that's a cutout for like a piece of an owl's ear. So everything sort of has its own personality and I try to you know, emphasize that personality and bring that to light in my work. Born and raised in Shenandoah Valley, Virginia, basically uh, mid-left part of Virginia, right in the valley, but between the Allegheny Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains, so kind of right in that corridor. It's really beautiful there. Basically, uh, grew up kind of hiking around in the, in the hills. I have to look off into the distance when I say this, because it's like reminiscing about your childhood. But very beautiful, rolling hills, streams, uh, farmland, agrarian area. You know, a lot of farmers and rednecks, basically. Bubbly Dynamics is the name of the building and kind of the guy who started this building. The name, as you can probably hear right now, there's uh, guys next door who are welding. Uh, there's a lot of different light manufacturing going on in this building. I have one section of the building, which is my studio. Um, but the idea was that all these local kind of creative people would come together in this building. But um, the building itself used to be an old, either like a meat plant or a paint factory or something along those lines. And um, my landlord bought the building, gutted the whole entire thing, and then basically redid it using all like found materials. Materials like conduit and things that were practical and not, you know, like a chunk of a piece of wood or something. Like things that were, were functional. And he would, um, he would get uh, reams of like, paper and sheetrock and things like that from other construction companies that were using this stuff and um, would just throw it in dumpsters. And so he would go out and get those things and then use it to rebuild this building. So um, there's also a green roof on the, on the roof. But um, all the people that work here, there's only a few artists, but the rest is, like I said, light manufacturing and just interesting folks, though. So everybody's kind of uh, in it for the right reasons. Years ago, I was living in an abandoned warehouse in Virginia, uh, in Stewart's Draft, Virginia, making art and selling it on the street in Charlottesville. I'm doing pretty well, I might add, but uh, the kids I was hanging out with, like I said, were like gutter punks. One of them got stabbed, and um, then somebody else stabbed someone else, and it started getting it was kind of hectic. So I thought, I better move out of there. At the same time, my uncle, who was uh, an art collector, saw some of the work that I was doing uh, and said, hey, you should come to Chicago and check the scene out there. And I thought, oh yeah, that sounds great. But I don't have any money, you know, to move to a big city or to even visit. And so he bought a couple of my paintings and he said, okay, I want you to take this money. I want you to fly out to Chicago. I want you to come visit me and check the scene out. So I did, I flew out and, um, and then he was uh, nice enough to set up a show for me in his apartment. He gave me a little show there and um, invited all these friends to come over and I sold them artwork.
I basically drove back home from that show because I had driven a bunch of my artwork out. And I packed up all my stuff in the warehouse, uh, threw it in my truck, and drove straight back out and I moved here in November that year. house here, you know, once you live in an abandoned place, man, you just, you know, you're drawn to other abandoned places. So I found an abandoned place here, moved in there, gutted the place, turned it into a gallery. There's a bunch of old trophies in the attic, like several hundred old bowling trophies, so I planted them in the front yard like flowers, and then I had spotlights shining on them so people would kind of wonder what the hell is going on. But, you know, you gotta do things to attract attention. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, the third show I had there, I met my wife now. Um, she came in and was like, what the hell are you doing in here? Like, what is this? I thought this was a real gallery. And, ah, love at first sight. So, yeah, anyway, that's how I moved to Chicago. My uncle helped me get out here, and then um, that was all over from there. But yeah, I've been here 10 years, and um, just kind of slowly tried to, to move in an upward direction since then. big influence of mine was my friend Nick Alley who I met him when I, I actually worked for the Forest Service for a little while and um, I met him he showed up the first day wearing no shoes and um, had a grizzly beard and he looked like a fucking hillbilly to just roll out of the mountains and he kind of was mm -hmm. but the dude was hardcore but he was a sweet guy and um, he didn't take really take any shit from anyone but he also mm -hmm. didn't give people shit so it was kind of like he was just sort of existing and he uh, one of the best things I learned from him was that if you really are going to do something, you just need to do it. Um, don't even tell anyone about it. Don't talk about it. Don't ask people. Just do a thing and figure it out. He dropped out of high school and uh, built a shopping cart with bicycle wheels on it and walked across the entire U.S. Uh, when he was in high school. And then he came back after that trip and was bored from being in society. So he decided to walk the Appalachian Trail barefoot. Uh, and then he came back from that, and then I met him <laughs> at the Forest Service. And I was just like this kid who was just learning things, and he's like, oh yeah, I walked across the U.S. and lived with hobos, and then I hiked the Appalachian Trail barefoot. What have you done? And I was kind of like, I bailed some hay, made a few paintings. But we hit it off, and he taught me a lot about the world, actually, without me actually having been in the world. Wanting to know the right way to do something, uh, there, there's no such thing, I don't think, as the right way to do something. I think there's, you have your way of doing it. And if it doesn't work out, you figure out a different way to do it. And that's a hard mentality for a lot of people to grasp, but it, I think it, it makes you be more creative. And it, it sort of helps to fire up some of those creative impulses in your body. So, yeah, if there's something you want to do, you just need to do it. It's, it's not fucking around. <laughs> you know, to put it bluntly. <laughs> <laughs>